Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com and I am going to do a little tutorial on how to do a simple little drop menu in Flash all the way from scratch from uh, building this first little button to uh, making little clones of it. Of course, you can dress yours up and make it pretty and make a really awesome green instead of the green that I have here and a really cool gray. Cool gray, huh? Anyway, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to do this in ActionScript 3. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to make a new document, command in. Uh, let's do flash action script three. All right. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and grab my rectangle tool. And let's set uh, our fill color to a nice little gray here. I'm just going to click and drag out a rectangle. Um, technically, I really don't ma It doesn't matter what it is right now because I'm going to change it anyway. Um, me personally, I always work, um, just kind of working off the little one inch or 72 pixels per inch. So I'm going to make the width of this 144 and let's make the height 36. And you might think this is a giant button here. Well, I'm, I'm using it for teaching. So, um, if you want to make a microscopic button or a button even larger, that's up to you. Uh, remember when you are creating your buttons though, think of your target audience. If you're doing this for, let's say preschoolers, don't think you have to make a large button. Okay. We're thinking like when we were in preschool, when they didn't have computers, uh, or at least ones we could use in class. Anyway, um, if you're doing talk radio, do not make something like extra tiny that only followers of nine inch nails would be able to find. Make sense? Okay, moving on. All right, so I've got that. So I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and convert this to a button. Let's do F8. And I'm just gonna call this button underscore BTN. Now I do underscore BTN or underscore MC if it's a movie clip when I'm doing things in a library. That's the way I teach and it's just kind of a nice habit to get in. This little underscore BTN or if it was a movie clip underscore MC does not matter in the library. However, it does once you start doing instance names so you can actually call it via action script when you're using it on stage. More on that later. Okay, so it's a button now. Let's uh. Go into edit mode, go into our button timeline. We're going to simply double click on this. And now we're actually in our buttons timeline. And I'm just going to do something really simple here. Um, my overframe, I'm going to add a keyframe, F6. Okay. And let's click here and we're going to make this a nice little green here. All right. That's good. Let's go back to scene one. Um, I'm going to test this out real quick. Command return, control enter on PC. Ooh, ah, there you go. Great. All right. Now back in the main timeline, we're going to click here. And what I want to do is go ahead and place this into a movie clip. So I will do F8 again. And instead of a graphic or a button, I'm going to set this to a movie clip. And I'm simply going to call this drop menu. Um, maybe even call it a one and I would do like underscore MC again, the stuff doesn't matter in the library. Okay. But I just like to do that. All right. Now I'm going to go into edit mode of this movie clip. So I'll do double click. Okay. Now I'm in the edit mode of movie clip. Looks good. And what I want to do now is give my button an instance name. Okay. So I'm going to call this menu. O one underscore BTN. Now something about uh, this, like this is where the underscore BTN is important because without that flash isn't going to help you write out your code. Okay. So another thing, notice I didn't go zero one menu underscore BTN. You cannot start your instance names with a number. Okay. So, and you also don't want to do any kind of dashes. I just normally do like an underscore or something like that. No dashes, no periods. Uh, so yeah. And me normally I keep everything lowercase. All right. So there we go on that. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to come down here to my main timeline. First off, let's call this layer buttons. 
Okay. I'm a firm believer in keeping your socks in your sock drawer, i.e. Uh, there's no text that's probably going to go on my buttons layer unless it is part of my button. Okay. No action script is going on my buttons layer, only buttons. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hold down my option key, alt on PC, click and drag over, let go of the mouse, let go of the keyboard. So I have duplicated the same button in frame two. All right. So the next thing I want to do is let's come up here and we've got menu 01 underscore BTN. We're going to copy it. Command C, control C on PC. We're going to paste in place. Command Shift V. Okay. Control, excuse me. Control Shift V on PC. And now, since that's all, all our information is there, I'm going to go over here to my Y. This is the up and down coordinates. And since I know the height is 36, instead of the, the Y being zero right here, I'm going to write in 36. Hit return. And voila. Hey, I've got another button there. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do Command C, Control C on PC, Command Shift V. Okay, and let's see. Instead of it being 36 this time, I'm going to come over here and make it 72. Awesome. Okay, so now we have three buttons. Only one problem though. We made copies of this, which means all of them have the exact same name. There's menu one. There's menu one again. And there's menu one again. That's going to be a problem when you're trying to do action script. Now we're not going to program these in this lesson, but I am going to show you how you need to definitely call them by a different name. Okay. So this is still going to be menu 01 BTN. Okay. This one, uh, let's make it complicated. This is going to be menu two. Okay. And this one will be menu three. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, well, if menu one's here, couldn't this be menu one uh, B and this one could be menu one C? Yes, it could be. Because what you can do later is, okay, well, menu one, that's for like IHOP. And menu two or menu one A or menu one B, actually, that one would be for McDonald's. And menu one C or menu three, depending on what you ever want to call it. I'm just calling it menu three. Um, this one would probably be for, I don't know, Taco Bell, something. I've been wanting Mexican lately. It's a little close to lunch. Actually, I don't think I ate breakfast. Anyway, so we've got that set up. Great. Now, what we are going to need to do is we are going to create an invisible button. Okay, we're doing this on frame two. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to simply kind of click and drag as if I was like in Photoshop or Illustrator and saying, yes, I want to, I want to select all these, but all I'm doing is just making a large enough rectangle, um, to encompass all those buttons there. Let go. Awesome. Now, if you notice, Hey, the buttons automatically jumped in front. That's cool. That's what we want, but actually has more to do with the hierarchy, um, working inside of flash because these buttons are symbols. They automatically are in front of what we just made, which is a shape. Okay. So let's go ahead and convert this shape, this little green box here. We're going to convert it to an invisible button. So we'll do F eight and let's make it a button. And me personally, I always call my buttons something like I N V S underscore B T N. And that's what I call my invisible buttons. Okay. You can call them George, Fred, or Ethel. Doesn't really matter as long as you know what you're doing and don't call them anything crazy because if you have to come back to this six months from now and you're wondering who George, Fred, or Ethel is, it's going to be a problem. All right. So we'll click on. Okay. Now watch this. Um, remember I said the, the way the hierarchy works, this shape was automatically in the background. Once I do. Okay. Boom. Green button has jumped to the front because it's now a symbol. And it's the latest symbol we've made. So it's going to jump in front of all the other buttons. All right. Well, let's move it backwards. So I'm simply going to right click or control click on here, come down to arrange and let's send it to the back. Boom. There the other buttons are. 